in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Father, help us again. We submit to you and we thank you for grace. By the power of the Holy Spirit, lift us, help us, build us, transform us. Grant us superior understanding of your ways. And in the name of Jesus, let our lives command results to the glory of the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Every time God wants to help a man, he helps his understanding. Every time God wants to help a man sustainably, he helps his understanding. He may birth a miracle to manage the situation at the moment, but the way God really helps people is to help your understanding. That is why the Holy Spirit is called a helper. And his primary assignment is to bring to us understanding. He's called the spirit of truth. It says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are a number of things I want us to discuss tonight. And um, wherever we stop tonight, we pray. And then we continue tomorrow. I'm teaching on the laws of exploits. The laws of exploits. What does it take to not just produce signs and wonders, but to become a sign and a wonder yourself? The Bible is a compendium of limitless possibilities. And God has spoken great things concerning the saints. But whether or not we step into the experience of God's desire, is left to us he's given us his word he's given us his love he's given us the holy spirit he's made available unto us everything that pertains unto life and godliness hallelujah and so it's up to us now to yield to the spirit of god and to yield to his word so that our understanding be quickened and then we obtain grace to walk in the experience of that which turns us into signs and wonders. The first thing I want to talk about is the necessity for extraordinary results. Um, results are not everything in the kingdom, but it is unwise and childish to downplay results. Let me start from that point. Are we together? Results as the excelling of the believer is concerned, as far as the glorification of the Christ is concerned. So my first, I want to start from this point. It is important for you and I to understand that there is a major role that results have to play in our lives, in the advancement of God's program, in the conversion of sinners. Are we together? It is very important. You may have heard me say that results are evangelists. There is a kind of sermon only results can preach. And there is an audience that has been designed to only listen to results. Hallelujah. It is important that believers produce extraordinary results. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Herein is our Father glorified. The Bible says, When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Ephesians 2, 10, we are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, unto good works, which God had before 
ordained that we should walk in them. Are we still together? Ephesians 3.10 to the intent that now unto principalities and powers might be made manifest by the church, the manifold, multifaceted wisdom of God. John chapter 4 and verse 48, Jesus was speaking to the woman at the well and said, except ye see miraculous signs and wonders, he says, you will not believe. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you must settle it for a fact that the only way God's program makes tangible progress in this world that seeks for a sign is when your life commands ever-increasing consistent results. Nobody leaves what works. Hallelujah. You can argue about what works. You can walk in denial, but nobody Technology has not invented a mechanism to ignore results. No. Everywhere you see results, even if it is the burning bush, you cannot ignore it. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to appreciate God's intent in conferences like this. That he wants to show us his ways. He desires that our lives command results. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13. Jesus was speaking and he said, Ye are the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. Profound description. He says, But if the salt has lost its flavor or saltiness, wherewith shall it be made salt is, is good for nothing but to be thrown underfoot and trampled by men. Then he says, You are the light of the world. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a lampstand, a candlestick, so that it gives light to all who are in the room. Then verse 16 says, let your light, now that you know you are the light, he says, let your light, it's another way of saying, let your life so shine before men, not before spirits, not before angels. He wants your lights to so shine so shine, shine to the extent that you cannot ignore it. It says that men may see your good works and glorify your father. And glorify your father. This is how they glorify your father. When your life becomes a living epistle, a capture of the multifaceted dimensions of God's power, God's wisdom, God's grace. I'm praying for someone already. Whatever keeps you ordinary, that your life has not become a testament of God's faithfulness, provoking people to love Jesus, provoking people to serve him. In the name of Jesus, I pray from tonight that you step into the supernatural. You step into supernatural living by the Spirit. Jesus met a woman at the well. Hallelujah. And then they began a discussion. She perceived that he was a prophet. And she began to ask him several questions. The Bible says that woman was so impacted by that encounter. She left her fetcher, left her pot. And the Bible says she ran immediately to the city. Her limitations left immediately. She forgot that she was once a woman who nobody would even listen to. That encounter brought confidence to her. She could dare people she once ran away from and said, come see a man. Forget about me. I have become an advocate of a man. Come see a man that told me everything I have done. Her witness was so compelling. The Bible says they came, not because they believed Jesus. Her witness, they knew the woman. Her witness was too compelling to be ignored. The Bible says they came. Now when they met Jesus, they said about this, that we now believe, not because of what she has said, we have seen for ourselves. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says, and with great power gave witness of the resurrection. The apostles gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says great grace was upon them all. With great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's important that we command signs and wonders. It is important that our lives become an effulgence of the supernatural. Do you believe this? Yeah. In Acts chapter 8 from verse 5, the Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria and there he preached Christ unto the people. The next verse says, the people listened with one accord 
to the things that Philip spake, hearing, notice, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. Hearing, if it is God's business, people must hear and see. The world is tired of hearing, they need to see. That's why I was blessed by that song, manifest your power. Let us see it. It says, oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Are we together now? Yes. I made up my mind as a covenant with my destiny that I will never live an ordinary life. No. And this is not just about some human ambition. I found out that if you truly love the Lord, you will hate an ordinary life. The reason is because your whole life's mission is to project Jesus and your passion, if you truly love him, must be to give the best presentation. Are we together now? Yeah. Nothing beats the supernatural. Nothing beats genuine results in representing Jesus. When John came and sent the disciples in offense and anger and said, come and ask Jesus, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? Jesus did not answer. He told the people, watch me. He began to lay hands on the sick. He began to heal. He began to do all of these things and said, go back and tell John what you have seen. What sign was given to him when the Messiah shows up? The Messiah was not supposed to be a noisemaker. He was supposed to be a miracle worker, a witness, a testament of God's love. The Bible never said, for God so loved that he spake, for God so loved that he gave. The greatest way to show love is in the demonstration, more than speaking. When I came to you, he said, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power, that your faith will not be founded upon Sophia, the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. Again, I pray for someone in the name of Jesus Christ, the grace that causes men to evolve until they walk in the supernatural in experience, may it rest upon you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ and so it's important for you to know that God desires and he is glorified when you produce results when you bear fruit Jesus frowned at fruitlessness and demonstrated it in Mark chapter 11 when he caused a fig tree the Bible tells us that he came to a fig tree and he saw the fig tree I thought Jesus would be motivated that at least it had green leaves there was no sparing. The Bible says immediately he cursed it and said no fruit will come out of you again. And by the next day it had withered. The merciful God didn't show mercy for lack of results. Do you know why? Because the tree was connected to the earth. All the resources to produce results were within its reach. And he said you are taken from the earth. There is no excuse for not producing results. He cursed it by disconnecting it to the earth. And it withered. I want to see the Lord glorified in my life. I want to see the nations love Jesus because of my life. I want to see someone saved because they look at my life. Yes. And whatever it would take as far as being the best representation of God's possibilities that my life can capture, that becomes my project. Do you believe this? All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you to be glorified for you to be lifted hmm. they saw the apostles the early church these were ordinary men ladies and gentlemen but they encountered the power of the Holy Spirit. They encountered the wisdom of God. And their lives were strange. They, they became living epistles in experience. They would enter cities as single individuals and shut down the cities without going to a radio station. Shut down the cities for Jesus. Not for the intent of making a name. My God. 
These were men that lived like gods upon the earth. If it is true that you love the Lord, it's important to begin to re-examine the reason why your life is not producing results. This is beyond making progress. No. This is passion for God demonstrated in the dexterity of your life that it becomes impossible for anybody to look at your life and forget God. Your life becomes a, it compels men to remember God. If they try to ignore him, God sends you to their face. And the moment they see you because you have become a mirror, you compel them to remember that there is a God in heaven. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? Let me make one more statement. It has become an anthem in my life. It's a revelation that God gave me, Reverend Sam. That the end of the believer's journey with God is that your life becomes in experience the manifestation of the glory of God. This is God's goal for every one of us. When God begins the journey with a believer, listen to me. God's goal for the believer is not just heaven. No. God's goal for the believer is not just healing. No. Everybody Jesus healed still died. God's goal for the believer, everybody who ate the bread still perished. They still were hungry. Are we together? God's goal, it's important for you to know. When you begin business with God, to what end? Why is he intentional like Moses Bliss sang? What is behind his passion and his obsession? What is behind his vulnerability for man? To the point that the psalmist will say, what is man? Could there be something you have hidden in man that man himself does not understand? What is man that you are mindful of him? Have you lost your creativity? Can't you fade away this species and build another one? Why a, the man will, will reject God and say we reject you and God will give them over to their enemies. Later he will come by himself. What is man? Are we learning already? So it's important for you to know that God's goal for my life and for your life is that you evolve in experience until you become a manifestation of the glory of God. The glory of God. Don't forget that word glory. The glory of anything is a description of why that thing is admirable, why that thing is valuable. So when you talk about the glory of a thing, you have to break it to the various compositions. Describing the glory of a thing is justifying why it is expensive or justifying why it is desirable. The glory of an expensive phone is in describing its features. You have to tell us why that phone is one million, why it is two million. Why is it not a hundred thousand? So you begin to talk about the features like speed, you know, uh, portability and other things. So when you talk about the glory of God, you are talking about all the compositions in God that makes him that glorious, that majestic, that wise. The glory of God is a compendium of his favor, his wisdom, his power. To really understand the glory of God, you have to break all of those facets of God and examine them as much as you can. And this is God's goal for the believer. That my life becomes a capture of the glory of God, manifested in his wisdom, manifested in his power, all of those dimensions. But there are three. There are three components that if they are missing in your life, we cannot say your life is carrying glory. Glory is a capture of many dimensions of God, but there are three of them that represent the pillars of glory. The Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. That is the first pillar of glory, wisdom. Everywhere you find glory, you first find wisdom. Number two, neither the mighty man or the powerful man glory in his might so we see power and then the third is wealth riches both from a secular standpoint and in the spirit every time you describe glory regardless what parameters you use these three must be represented they were found in solomon's life they were found in david's life they are all found in heaven are we together now it is impossible to talk about the glory of God, ignoring his wisdom, ignoring his power, ignoring his wealth. And I hope you know when I talk about wealth, I'm not talking of money. You never heard me say money. Mm -mm. 
because God does not use money. Are we together? So, God desires that our lives become a manifestation of his glory and experience. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is exploits in the kingdom is governed by laws. L-A-W-S. Exploits in the kingdom. The ability to command results. The ability to produce extraordinary results in and through your life is governed by spiritual laws. And broadly speaking, please let me have your attention. Broadly speaking, there are two kinds of knowledge that every believer must interact with if you want your life to produce. Broadly speaking, number one, the Bible calls it the knowledge of him. You need to know God. Number two, you need to understand the principles of the kingdom. So broadly speaking, these are the two kinds of knowledge that you must have in experience. Number one, the knowledge of him, God himself. When you begin your journey to exploit and you start by learning principles, you will live a defeated life. The believer's journey starts with God before his ways. Are we together? God is greater than his ways. Your passion must be driven to his person first before his ways. Are we together now? Yes. So the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32b, it says, but the people that do know their God. He never said the people that do know his ways. He never said the people that do know his principles. Because in order of divine priority, the journey to a believer's exploit starts things. Are we together? Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next verse, please. Verse 3. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Again, through the knowledge of him. Say the knowledge of him. John 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Jesus is praying. And he says, this is life eternal. That means the administration of eternal life, tapping into the riches that come with eternal life, is predicated upon the knowledge of the only true God and Jesus himself, his son whom he has sent. So most believers have not paid the price to know God. Listen, please. Your confidence, the audacity that you receive in this kingdom is a product of your knowledge of God. You cannot stand before mountains and just speak, ladies and gentlemen. No. Your encounter must be bigger than your obstacles. Otherwise, you cannot prevail. Hallelujah. Exploits does not start with the pursuit of things. No. You try to learn faith without God. You try to learn principles without God. You will be frustrated eventually. The correct protocol to accessing grace for exploits starts with your passion and your hunger for God. Look at it in the life of the disciples. When he called them, he said, follow me. Not follow it. Follow me. I am the one who will make you. It cannot make you. No. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me. And he began to make them. Teaching them about himself and teaching them about the kingdom. Eventually, they translated from ordinary men and they become fearful apostles. These are they that turn the world upside down. Hallelujah. Yes. The knowledge of God. The God that you know is the God that you present to your generation. Did you hear what I said? The God that you have encountered. Moses, you cannot talk to Pharaoh about a God who you have not met. And Moses said, who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? Pharaoh had encountered other gods, but you claim to be different. What makes you different? What do I need to know about you? Can I tell you? The labor that many people go through trying to learn, with all due respect, the labor that many people go through trying to learn faith is because most people do not have an encounter with God. Most of those who walked in faith 
learned about faith as a teaching minimally. It was their encounter that brought such confidence. Who taught David about faith? He encountered God and he said, please Saul, allow me to take this man. And they said, whose son are you? What kind of boldness is this? The veterans of war in Israel, they stood afraid of this beast. And here comes a teenager saying, I, I can take him. Come on. And the king said, all right, take my armory. He said, no, I was not trained with this. And he stood before Goliath with a sling. And Goliath said, am I a dog? You, you've not heard about what I do? And he said, you come to me with your spears and your bows, but I come to you in a name. I met someone in the wilderness. My confidence is based on what he told me. What has God told you that makes you to not run away from challenges? The God that you know, man of God, especially if they can show you a picture, an evidence. Even when you don't believe, you are forced to respect. If this man knows this man, then I need to be careful. But the people that do know, they are God. Life will ask you who sent you. Are we together? You believe what I'm saying? Yes. You see, when you know the God of the Bible, then you will know what he can do. I'm just opening you up to see this first dimension of knowledge. Now, for many, the average believer, the moment you talk about the knowledge of God, they shut down immediately. But when you tell them, receive breakthrough, I'm not against that. I'm not being sarcastic. Receive breakthrough or look, let things change in your life. They say, amen. You are going to live a weak and defeated life, perpetually chasing after people. Real strength in the kingdom is derived from an encounter. Real strength. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Strong. You can look at 2024 and say you will become as I have called you. And it will ask you based on what? Why should I obey you? Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hallelujah. Fear died in my life. Honestly. When I had an encounter with God. Don't mistake this for pride. It's the truth. One of the ways that you conquer fear. Is to truly have an encounter with God. When you know who God is. There are certain. Most of us the fear that is in our life. Is not a demonic attack. It's a state of ignorance that was taken advantage of by demon spirits. Are we together now? The knowledge of God is threefold. Let me just say this. If you want to know God, I hope you know you can know God. As mysterious as God looks, he wants to be known. And there are three ways according to scripture we study God. Number one, his nature and character. The first way to know God is to study his nature and his character. Are we learning now? I'm not going to talk much about that. I just want to give you this as, as a revelation. When you know the nature and the character of God, there are some things you will believe about God and there are other things you will stop believing immediately. Are we together? If you get a text now in your phone and some scammer says, I am Reverend Sam, come and meet me somewhere. Because you know his nature and his character. You know what he can do. That becomes the basis of what you believe and what you do not believe. You will hardly become a victim of foolishness in the presence of knowledge. Are we together now? Yes. So, you study the character of God to know God. For instance, if... Let me use a gentleman. Can I have any gentleman? Just come. Anyone? Come, come, come. Now watch this. Let me use this gentleman. Everyone look at this. Assuming I want to send you to give him something and you do not know him. You have never met him. I can use his nature and immediately the fear of doom leaves your life. That it is true that God is just but his mercy triumphs over his judgment. 
It doesn't put you in a state of carelessness, but it becomes a consolation that you are walking with a God that loves you. Number two, when God demands that you love him and serve him, he also lets you know that the character of love is that he gives and no one outgives God. So you don't feel cheated giving your all to God because there is a consolation in your work with God. He's not a cruel king who is just asking you to give offering, give money, worship him, come to church and there is nothing in place for you. No, that is against the very nature of love. You are my God. Now it's not a special number, it's a revelation. You are my God. For you are my God. Ah. You are my God. Do you believe this? I'll forever be chasing after you. Since I found that you are my God, I'll be chasing after you. That I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. So when men ask you, why do you look like a fool serving God? What is the need for you? You tell him, number one, I serve him because I love him. But number two, there is such a plan in his dealings with me. Are we together now? He gave his son and you have no idea of the exceeding great and precious promises he has for me. I serve him because I love him, but I do not serve him in vain. There are consolations. The disciples came to ask him a question. We have given all to follow you. It is not in his nature to rob men. No. You do not serve God and go down. This becomes your motivation to serve even in church. Supervised or not, you spend your life like a fool and allow the naysayers laugh and say sorry for the remaining part of their lifetime as they see God begin to showcase through your life what it means to be loved by God. Is someone learning? Many believers are in church, but they do not know God. They cannot identify God. And so the devil plays with their minds and he gives them all kinds of vain descriptions of God and they are tempted to believe until they believe that God is cruel, until they believe that God is a fraudster and then they extend that pain to everyone who represents him. Are we together? Yes. The Lord is loving, he is gracious. Go and read your Bible and see what he did with ordinary men who dared to trust him. Whoever told you that this God that you serve is he there to scam you to what end, to what profit? He was God before your arrival. What glory does he get leaving you cheated that you gave him your life, you gave him your finances, you gave him your all? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The Bible says, but our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, that it walketh in us a far exceeding weight of glory. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this God is too good. Oh. I will worship Amons, respectfully speaking, that are just a replacement for the bankruptcy of knowing God. They will not be necessary if we press to know God. Thank you. There are three dimensions. Let me just talk about one. Are you ready? Hmm. How do I know God? By the study of his nature and his character. When you study the nature of God, you will understand what God can do. Read the entire Psalm 103. I have read my Bible by the privilege of God's grace. There is no chapter in the Bible that captures a display of God's nature like Psalm 103. Psalm 103 is the richest capture of God's nature and character in my study. It says, just give us verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. 
bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Then the Bible lists five of them. There are five of those benefits. Number one, who forgives your sins. Number two, who heals your diseases. Number three, who delivers your soul from destruction. Number four, who mercies honor. Number five, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Now, when you begin to read from verse three, the Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. And right to the end, it describes for you the nature of God. Let me give everybody assignment in righteousness. Go and study Psalm 103. Devoid. Start this year knowing the God you are serving. Know the one who is leading you so you are not confused. Are we together? So let me give you the second aspect, the knowledge of God, just for the sake of this our discussion. One of the ways we know God again is by the study of his power. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 to 21. Ephesians, watch this now. The Bible says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Please, let's shout verse 19 together. Ready? One, to go. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power? In fact, you can stop there. One of the ways we know God is to study his power. Come and manifest your power. Dideo, dideo. Hey, oh God of signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer. Come and manifest your power. Dideo, oh God of signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer. Come and manifest your power. Come and manifest your power. Come and show forth your power. Elijah said, let the God that answers by fire, let him be the God. Even if you do not know his name, wait for his power. Come and manifest your power. Listen, in construction, we have very major construction companies. And there are times you can know a block that was made by, you know, just some well-meaning person and one that was made by a serious construction company. And sometimes when you see certain blocks, they are almost casted like concrete. They pour them down and yet they don't break. Before you see to verify what company, you just know that whatever this company is, it has to be a solid company to have produced this. You can use the works of God to verify that he is there. So when Moses went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, he said, thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, that is not a name. Let my people know. They healed. Beelzebub did certain things. But there are certain things Satan cannot do. When you know the extent. This is Paul's prayer. That you understand the extent of his power. So every time you say God like Lazarus. If you were here our brother would not have died. But she said even now. Someone prophesied. Even now. Ah, God, you didn't do it last year because in his economy, there is no such thing as delay. He can come, he can ah. come and manifest your power. Dideo. Come and manifest your power. Come and manifest your power. Oh, God of signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Dideo. One more time, O oh God of signs and wonders. Savior, come and manifest your power. I truly believe that there are people here 
that what God will begin to do in your life. There are people who had no names in the Bible, but they were described by the spectacular manifestations of the hand of God upon their life. Are we together? Who was born blind? I mean, why was this man? Who seen that this man was born blind? Him or his father? Jesus said, that's not the issue. Now is an opportunity for the glory of God to be made manifest. The first miracle recorded in scripture, according to John's synoptic account, is found in John chapter 2. Hallelujah. The wedding in Cana of Galilee. By the time we get to verse 5, the Bible says, Mary called the people and said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do. Then we get to verse 10. Give us verse 10. The Bible says, this beginning of miracles. Verse, okay, 11 now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Galilee, Cana of Galilee, and manifested his glory, and the disciples believed on him. This beginning, he didn't stop there. Then by the time we go to John chapter 20 and verse 30, give it to us please. John chapter 2 begins the miracles. John chapter 20 and verse 30 and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book 31. He says, but these are written that he might believe. You can believe in Jesus by seeing a demonstration of his power. Anytime people say, where is your God? Don't answer them. Let your results answer. Your results are better speakers. Come and manifest your power. Dideo, dideo. Manifest your power. You manifest your power. Can I tell you, a cry to see the power of God in your life is a valid cry. Ask the psalmist, oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul longs after you as in a dry and a weary land. He said to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. I shouldn't just see your power in church alone. I need to import that reality to my home, to my business, to my health. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. Please give it to us. And with great power, the Bible says, gave the apostles witness, Acts 4, 33, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon how many? All. Not preachers. All. Not just businessmen. All. It takes great power. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Peter was speaking in the house of Cornelius. He said, how God and Jesus of Nazareth, he was the word incarnate, but he still needed power with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about. Don't go about with just compassion. You'll be disappointed. You need to have beyond compassion. Power. Ministry without power, you will be offended, exhausted, frustrated until you give up I assure you it's not an insult it's a description it's the, it's, the, it's the name given to the decline that happens until you lose strength it says if you turn aside in the day of battle it never talked about your heart condition it is simply because your strength is small we need power power in all its ramifications supernatural power Take it high for me, please. Let me prophesy upon someone. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me, the Holy Ghost power, rest on me, let your power for signs and wonders, rest on me, rest on me, let your power for signs and wonders, rest on me, 
rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Holy Ghost power, rest on me. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran. He ran. We don't run just by intention. It is based on what comes upon us. That's what drives you to run. Power from on high. Power from on high. Power from on high. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in all your ways. It is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies will submit themselves to you. It says, our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Please listen to me. When you call God El Shaddai, it is a revelation that many people do not understand. The literal translation is the multi-breasted one. It's not a very accurate translation, but it's an attempt to describe the extent of sufficiency. Hallelujah. The multi-breasted one. That means there is no limitation to his ability to supply. Are we together now? When a woman gives birth to triplets or quadruplets, two have to be patient if she's breastfeeding them. Not because she's wicked, she's limited. So when the Bible calls him El Shaddai, that means within his economy, one person does not have to suffer because another person is experiencing him. Shaddai. That means God can lift everyone at the same time. One person's rising does not affect another because it is El Shaddai. Are you listening now? Please, I want you to hear this. If you press to know God, his character, and then you get to understand his power, just these two dimensions alone will turn your life around. Reverend Sam is able to do what he is doing today because he has encountered these dimensions. When I sat down and I was seeing the testimonies yesterday, you know, people, not everybody is faking this thing. Oh, listen carefully to me. There are people who really love God and don't get used to, and just feel that every time you see people, miracles and all of that. No, not at all. I want you to believe this. There are people who fear God. There are people who have seen his face. Among the many things that they received is his power. Hallelujah. Yes. There are preachers here listening online across the nations. Can I tell you, our generation is not in ignorance of sermons. We have done well. We need to import authentic, genuine Holy Ghost power that is put on display, dumbfounding critics, principalities, and powers. I pray that in my lifetime, there will be an emergence of a generation that will be demonstrators of genuine, superior, spiritual power, verifiable by science. Hallelujah. There are certain miracles in the Bible that were called notable miracles. Notable miracles. That you speak over someone and program a climate of favor over him and tell him go. And he returns wondering, rejoicing. And then you can tell science there is a dimension beyond the Y, the X. There is a dimension beyond mathematics. They are all an attempt to describe a realm beyond the third dimensional realm. Are we together now? Do you believe that will happen? Through you? That I may know him. Hmm. This was a prayer of the apostle that I may know him, my goodness, 
that I may know him, that I may know him. I just saw light on a gentleman, just one gentleman. This is what I saw, I'm in the spirit. We'll find a place to wrap up today. By tomorrow I will show you the other angle. I'm still seeing this light again. There is a gentleman, help him please. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe Lord Listen, remember the assignment I've given you. I want you to go back and study Psalm 103. Study, use it tonight before you return tomorrow. Study it and destroy those negative lies the devil has told you about God. Are we together? The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, rich in mercy and love. The Lord is almighty. Now you study his power the extent of his power the extent of his power then you will see how small your situation is then you will believe that it is not a scam if God gives you a house tomorrow then you will believe he's not endorsing carelessness it's a system of advantage the implication of his nature that God can turn Samaria overnight to become Beulah and Hephzibah Listen, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let's be careful. In, in a bid to teach people things like the law of process and to help people grow, let's not downplay and insult God by doubting every possibility that God can bring that is beyond the scope of men. I don't endorse laziness and carelessness, but it is a joke to believe. If you don't believe God and you are afraid, grow. But don't stop other people from, who told you God cannot bless you overnight? Listen, he will not do that to honor your carelessness. But there is a system of advantage captured in his dealing with men. And where the need arises according to your understanding, he is able to bring you into that reality. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow. It is true. Listen. If some of us were to follow the normal course of growth, we would not be one-tenth where God has placed us by grace. Did you hear what I said? So I'm saying this so that as I speak over your life, it is not a license for carelessness. It is not a license for lack of diligence. These are all together the systems in the kingdom. But there is an advantage that the believer has. Don't waste the presence of the Holy Spirit. Don't waste the supremacy of the word. Don't insult the mercy and the love and the grace of God. What then is the advantage of these things? The Bible says, wherefore are given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Listen, that by them we might be the partakers in experience of his divine nature. Haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God is not a fraudster that will allow people carelessly just prosper like that without engaging the principles of prosperity and growth. But you will be joking to believe that God does not assist men. Ebenezer, El Shaddai, Jaira, come on. Rewarder, in fact. 
that he that cometh to God must come believing that he is, then that he is the rewarder of them, not all, of them, not all. So don't be offended if you don't get it. He never said he's the rewarder of all. He said he's the rewarder of them. If you don't get it, you have not subscribed to be part of the them. Among the very them that receive are them that diligently seek him. Serving God pays. Did you hear what I said? Loving God pays. Pouring your all for him. Except you are faking it somewhere. I tell you, when you pour your all with reckless abandonment, if it's the God of the Bible, in your lifetime, he will console you. Remember, you are not serving him for things. You are serving him because you love him. However, he has vowed that you would not serve him and he will leave you in shame. It is true. There are many believers today who are in a position that has discouraged other believers because we do not find the faithfulness of God captured in their lives. Unfortunately, you are the only Bible that many people have to read. They have to read. And you have been showing negative verses through your life. People have used your life as a canvas to paint God. And the God that your life has helped them paint is not the one that died for us. There is a kind of Jesus we are selling to the nations that they will not receive. No. Are we together? If God is love, it must be demonstrated. He that did not spare his son, but that he offered him freely. How much more? This is God we are talking about. And I'm not just talking about things. You want to thrive? You want to excel supernaturally? You must know the God who stands by you like a mighty terrible one. You will not be able to believe God if you are still doubting who he is. Are we together now? Again, in my example, if I tell you come and collect one million tomorrow, the first thing is you will verify. Am I that sincere, number one? Then do I have that amount? If you verify that I'm sincere, I can't be joking with you. Then you now verify, do you think you can have one million to give me? It is Those are the, the examinations that build your confidence. The woman said to herself, there are things she said to herself. I know he's mighty. If I may but touch the hem of his garment. Hmm. Listen, I'm wrapping up. Please, I want you to look at me. You see, with all humility, I will tell you, this book you see is not a novel for me. It's not a newspaper. By the spirit of grace, I have searched and I have found that God can be trusted. I have searched and I have found that God can be trusted. Nigeria was not founded when this Bible, when God walked here. So Nigeria's condition, as much as we still trust God to continue bringing us to a safe heaven, you can define your realities. It is written is greater than what you are seeing. It is written is greater than what you are hearing. It is written is greater than what you are feeling. And the Bible says, let God be true. And all men, let God be true over my finances. Let God be true over my health. Let God be true. This man who is standing before you, I know what it means to rise from grass to grace. You are not hearing cunningly devised fables. Our lives are epistles of the faithfulness of God. I'm encouraging someone before I speak to you. I want you to take the time to know God. Find out why you are disbelieving him. Find out why you believe someone in National Assembly more than God. Find out why you believe a senator more than God. Not, not to insult them. Find out why you believe a preacher more than God. It's deficiency of an encounter. When God speaks, can you believe him? When God shows you things, can you agree with him? For instance, when he tells you that this year when men say there is a casting down, for you you shall say, is it a memory verse? Or it is a revelation coming from a God who has integrity. 
The word integrity comes from the word integer, void of falsehood. Same within as without. Hallelujah. There is nothing God tells me that I will not believe him. But it's not just mental assent. No, you can be saying I believe whereas you are lying first to yourself and then those who hear you. I believe is supposed to be a resultant effect of an encounter. There is something about him I have found. God cannot lie. Listen, the Bible does not say, does not lie. The word cannot means everything he says becomes. So if God says you are great, for as long as you heard it, it has gone forth. And that word only returns when you become. Only limited by your refusing it. Because he gave you a will and he will respect it if you refuse. Hallelujah. There are people here, the things you have seen from scripture and from your visions, they all attest to the fact that God is ready to do great things with you and your children. But you can argue it away and allow unbelief overwhelm you and allow scientific Christianity to downplay the integrity and, and insult God's power and act like the one upon whom the king leaned on and said even if God will open the heavens might these things be hmm. when Gabriel came before Zechariah and he doubted him he said I am Gabriel that stands before the presence of God will I leave such a presence with falsehood what is an indictment on the one that sent me, not just me. I bring you a message from the throne and you are doubting. I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. If I carry falsehood, won't his presence vet me? This is what he was telling Zechariah. And for that, a very strange scripture. It was not the Holy Spirit that shut his mouth from speaking. Gabriel and Zechariah as a priest in his office priests were immune by reason of their office but for disbelieving God his mouth was shut until the day he agreed with God in writing John and no prayer his mouth opened could it be that there are certain things that have been shot not by the devil God is, is shutting it so that you don't use your mouth and your hands to damage something God is doing the day you now agree there are things that will open on their own like today you can agree with God I believe you you have said I'm a man of God a great one I believe you you have said I'm a Deborah to my generation God I do not even have the eloquence of speech but one thing I know and I believe is that God is not a man that he should lie you have told me I will carry the sounds of worship to the ends of the earth this is for someone I believe you you have said I am Esther even though coming from Shushan my destiny is to sit with Ahasuerus I believe you I may not see the wind I may not see rain yet my valley shall be filled not because of the weather but the one who controls the weather go ahead in one minute and begin to declare Lord I believe you I believe you take this moment to cause unbelief from your life we wax valiant upon the strength of our encounters but the people that do know their God in career do know their God concerning their health do know their God concerning their days do know their God as touching victory over demons and principalities and powers do know their God concerning finances do know their God as touching ministry the Bible says they shall be strong and they shall do exploits someone go ahead and pray you are a God of love you are a God of grace you are a God of mercy you are a God of judgment you are a God of compassion, great and mighty, powerful and awesome, powerful indeed and awesome, all powerful. Take a minute to pray. Shake away unbelief from your life.
Listen to me. Please hear me. When you know who God is, you will believe everything he tells you. When you know who God is, you will be able to distinguish between his voice and the voice of doubt, the voice of fear, the voice of your past, the voice of yesterday. There is, as it were, many voices. And the apostle says, none of them is without signification. This moment as I speak to you, Satan is also attempting to speak to you. 2023 is still speaking to you too. Wanting to bring his jealousy into 2024. To repeat your pain again. To repeat your misery again. Yesterday is very jealous. It seeks to reproduce itself into your today. It takes you holding the shield of to grace. Keep your beautiful hands lifted. Lifted. Father, thank you so much for these ones. Your word declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. These ones have come sincerely with their hearts opened. And based on the authority of your word and upon their confession of faith, I declare their sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. And I decree and declare that today you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I impart upon you the grace to live a victorious Christian life. And I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now, please, all of you in front, may I request your counselors waving their hands. I would want you to please move to my left. That will be your right. You will have a word with the counselors just for a moment, a minute, and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Now, I heard Reverend Sam talking about the prayer request. Is it all right if I just lend my voice on that? Please, um, for those, when we ask people to bring prayer requests, it is because it's a very valid and powerful and potent principle. Number one, it helps you coordinate your faith and your expectation. Because the Bible says in Philippians 4 and verse 6, it says to be anxious for nothing. Then it says, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, let your request be made known unto God. Are we together? So when we ask people to bring their request, it's not a ritual. No, we're praying together. But number one, to prepare that, you have to meditate. There are many people who don't even know what they want. And so sometimes you take the time to write, and then it is a way of involving your faith in the process. And then... It is the most accurate representation of your desires. If we prophesy, we see impact. But when you write it by yourself, another way, another thing that, that uh, prayer requests do as far as that help is you can collect the request of another. Your family member, someone online, the farthest part of the earth, they can give it to you. You can print it and bring it. It doesn't have to be yours alone, your own request. You can collect that of another and then bring it tomorrow, somewhere in the course of the service. Okay, I see people already with it. Can I announce that they bring theirs now? Okay, so in, if you have yours now, you can do well. Maybe ushers, just help us wave your hands or wave it. And then, please ushers, can you look out for those who have that so that you bring it. And um, I'm sure that tomorrow we'll have the time to be able to speak over it in the name of Jesus. So we're looking at the laws of exploits. This is part one. By the grace of God, we'll look at part two tomorrow. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. May your evening and your morning be blessed. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, 
grant me the discipline 